Okay, we're looking at improper integrals. And the question is, does the interval converge or converge? We're not interested in what it converges to. We just want to answer the question, does it converge or diverge? And the um, first theorem we want to look at is the direct comparison theorem. It's built off of these two functions, f and g. Now I have these two functions where f is the one that's larger than the g for the entirety of the interval x is greater than a. Okay, If it turns out that the integral on f is convergent, then it must be true that the integral on g is also convergent. So think about what that means. This integral represents the area under the curve. So if f has a finite area, then the smaller g function will also have to have a finite area. That's the first part of the direct comparison theorem. Second part. Well, if g is divergent, the integral on g is divergent, then the integral on f must also be divergent. Think about the area. If I have infinite area for g, I'm going to have infinite area for f because f is larger. So if, you're, if the function that you have is larger than a function that's that has infinite area, your function has no choice but to also have infinite area. But the inequality has to hold. It must be true that f is less than g, and they have to be positive. So that's great if the inequality holds. So let's work out two examples. These two guys here, x over x cubed plus 1 from 1 to infinity, and 2 plus e to the minus x over x from 1 to infinity. After we've done this, if you want to see more, then I have two more on my YouTube videos. I have um, x plus 1 over the root of x fourth minus x from 2 to infinity. There's a YouTube link. And then uh, arctan of x all over 2 plus e to the x from 0 to infinity. And there's the YouTube link for that. Let's deal with this guy here first. x over x cubed plus 1 from 1 to, the infin to infinity. Well, you know, from 1 to infinity, this function is always positive. That's great. But we won't have a nice way to integrate that. Maybe if it was x squared, we could integrate it by using a u sub. But no, not with x cubed. So we don't have a technique to integrate it. We don't really want to know the exact answer. We're interested in whether it converges or diverges. OK, so the question is, this integral, does it converge or diverge? All right, great. So looking closely at it, as x gets big, it turns out that this plus 1 that's underneath here shouldn't really matter. right? I take something and cube it that's big. Who cares that I'm adding 1 at the end? So I can drop that term off. That's our goal. We want to be able to drop terms off and compare with what, would, what we would have if that term wasn't there. So if the plus 1 wasn't there, I'd be looking at x over x cubed plus 1. The question is, what kind of inequality would I have? The inequality would be less than because this denominator has more. If I have a larger denominator, then I'm going to be smaller. That's the only thing that changes, that this guy has a bigger denominator. OK, great. And if you simplify x over x cubed, you get 1 over x squared. So this is the one function that we have to go out and get. Here's our given function. Now the order that we have it in is that our given function is less than this function that we went out and got, 1 over x squared. Let's check the integral on 1 over x squared. This is x to the minus 2 as b goes off to infinity. The limit from 1, uh, from 1 to b, the integral from 1 to b. So it's, it's x to the minus 1 over minus 1, or minus 1 over x. And uh, yeah, we put a b in, we put a 1 in, and that's going to go off to 0. Great. So this thing is convergent. So it turns out then that, that, that your function that you were given is smaller than a function that is that integral, that's integral is convergent 
So it has a finite area. This guy has a finite area. Convergent means it has a finite area. I shouldn't say a finite, just finite, but it has finite area. Okay. So your guy is less than something that has finite area. So then by the direct comparison theorem, your function must also have finite area. And finite area is going to mean that your integral is convergent. And what we're using is the direct comparison theorem. That's our first example. We try to see what doesn't matter as x gets big. And we try to drop that off to get this other function that's out here. And the function that you get, you must make sure that it is something that you can integrate. You need to know what happens with that integral. Does it converge or diverge? Let's see example two. Two plus e to the minus x all over x. The question is, is um, convergence or divergence? That's, that's what we're worried about. So taking a close look at this, this time you would think that the two would be the thing that wouldn't matter. You would think the two would be the thing that you could drop off, just like we dropped the one off on the last example. But no, the thing that we want to drop off actually is the e to the minus x. Why? It's, you know what it really is? It's one over e to the x. What's gonna happen to that? Well, it's gonna get small. The bigger x gets. So small that we won't have to worry about it. It won't matter. So we drop off that term. Okay, so we drop off that term. Now what happens? Why does the inequality go in this direction? Well, it's because the function that we're looking at has a bigger numerator this time. Everything else being the same, if I add something to the numerator, then all in all, I'm going to be larger. And so, therefore, my inequality must go in this order. Here's the function that you went out and got. Here's your function. Here's the function that you went out and got. Make sure the one that you went out and get is something that you can integrate. And it is from 1 to infinity, just 2 over x, or, or 2 times log x, 2 times log b minus, you know, the log 1 is 0. And, and b is going to infinity, where the log is then going to go to infinity. This is going to be divergent. Okay, so your function is larger than a divergent, a function that has a divergent integral. Um, divergent is going to mean to you infinite area. So, so, so your function, your function is bigger <coughs> than something that has infinite area. Your function then must also have infinite area. Does that make sense? And so then, by the comparison, the direct comparison theorem, we have that it's divergent. All right, great. So, in the next video, we'll look at. What could go wrong? Um, maybe this inequality won't go the right way. Maybe it'll end up being different. And so when it's different, we can't use the direct comparison theorem if these ended up being backwards. So in the next video, we will see how to handle that. Thank you.